archaeological discovery proved the truth of the Bible. Daniel 4.30 proved something that many did not believe for many years. Daniel 4.30 The king said thoughtfully, Is not this the great Babylon which I myself have built as the royal residence and seat of government by the might of my power and for the honour and glory of my majesty? As per Daniel 4.30, Daniel knew that the new Babylon was created by Nebuchadnezzar, which was previously thought to be untrue, but was later verified by recent archaeology. Nobody thought Nebuchadnezzar had built the new Babylon during the Maccabean period. This belief was based on the lack of any archaeological evidence to support it. However, archaeological excavations have confirmed that Nebuchadnezzar did indeed construct the new Babylon city. This discovery has shed new light on the subject, revealing that the previous assumptions were incorrect. It is interesting to note that the Bible was already aware of this fact, even before it was confirmed by these recent research findings. The new Babylon was a significant undertaking and its construction involved the use of advanced engineering techniques. Nebuchadnezzar's creation of this city was a reflection of his ambition and desire to establish a powerful empire. Despite the skepticism surrounding the construction of the new Babylon, it is now clear that Nebuchadnezzar's vision and determination allowed him to create one of the most impressive empires of the ancient world. Picture this. A time when the lines between gods and mortals were blurred, when a king was not just a ruler but a deity himself. Such was the reign of Nebuchadnezzar, who commanded not just respect but worship from his subjects. Thus, his rule was characterized by an aura of mystique and religious fervor. He was an incredibly significant individual, so much so that no one else in the world could compare. The very idea of even slightly disrespecting his servants, let alone speaking out of turn to him directly, was enough to send shivers down anyone's spine. King Nebuchadnezzar wielded unprecedented power and privilege that exceeded most people in history. He built a vast and mighty empire that eventually subjugated two other great civilizations, Assyria and Egypt. He held more control over the world during his reign than any other man before him. However, his written testimony reveals that his wealth and power gradually made him intoxicated by his success. He became increasingly arrogant, and his position as the most powerful man on earth gave him a distorted and inflated view of life and the world around him. At the British Museum, you can find six columns of ancient writing that date back to the Babylonian era. These columns provide a fascinating insight into the reign of King Nebuchadnezzar and his ambitious building projects aimed at transforming the city. The inscriptions on these columns offer a glimpse into the king's desire to improve the infrastructure, architecture, and overall aesthetics of the city. These columns are regarded as significant historical artifacts. The majority of bricks unearthed during Babylon's excavations bear the inscription Nebuchadnezzar, King of Babylon, supporter of Esagila and Azida, exalted firstborn son of Nabopolassar, King of Babylon. The Bible tells us a lot about this man, who was the greatest man of his time. This king fell by the hand of God and praised the God of Israel. Nebuchadnezzar had married a beautiful princess from the Persia mountains, where Tehran, Iran's capital, is now located. She arrived at Nebuchadnezzar's palace, but quickly became homesick. She missed the mountains, the trees, and the wild animals the most. When Nebuchadnezzar learned the reason for her dissatisfaction, he immediately committed to rectifying the situation. He constructed a massive brick mountain and adorned it with an array of trees, shrubs, and plants. Its breathtaking appearance earned it a place as one of the seven wonders of the world. 
The Hanging Gardens of Babylon attracted many visitors. Above the gardens, a private zoo of exotic animals was built to entertain the king's wife, unfamiliar with the flat surroundings of Babylon. One day, he was standing on the roof of his magnificent palace when he suddenly realized what he had accomplished. Isn't this the great Babylon that I have built by my own power and glory? He asked himself. Feeling proud and accomplished, he dozed off and dreamed. Daniel 4 is the only testament story where a person is transformed into an animal, similar to the classical motif of metamorphosis. Think of the scene in Pinocchio when the boys transform into jackasses, or the numerous tales from the Roman poet Ovid where the gods change humans into creatures that represent their tragic flaws. The text portrays Nebuchadnezzar's destiny in the following way. He was banished from human society and ate grass like an animal. His body was drenched with heaven's dew, and his hair grew as long as an eagle's feathers. His nails were like those of a bird's claws. Is this the stuff of fairy tales? What happened to Nebuchadnezzar, and what does it mean? This is not your typical storybook narrative or a depiction of a delusional mind. It is a thrilling rendition of how God instructs the proud to honor and glorify his name. Nebuchadnezzar and the Animal Mind In the fourth chapter of the book of Daniel, we find Nebuchadnezzar, the Babylonian king, relaxing in his palace when he has a dream. The dream, however, is no ordinary dream. The dream's details are not revealed until later in the chapter, but it is clear that it deeply troubles Nebuchadnezzar and weighs heavily on his mind. Daniel 4, 10-30 Amplified Bible The visions that passed through my mind as I lay on my bed were these. I was looking, and behold, there was a tree in the middle of the earth, and its height was great. The tree grew large and became strong, and its height reached to heaven, and it was visible to the end of the earth. Its leaves were beautiful, and its fruit abundant, and in it was food for all. The beasts of the field found shade under it, and the birds of the sky nested in its branches, and all living creatures fed themselves from it. And behold, I saw in the visions of my mind as I lay on my bed an angelic watcher, a holy one, descended from heaven. He shouted aloud and said this, Cut down the tree and cut off its branches. Shake off its leaves and scatter its fruit. Let the living creatures run from under it and the birds fly from its branches. Nevertheless, Leave the stump with its root in the ground, bound with a band of iron and bronze in the new grass of the field. And let him be wet with the dew of heaven, and let him feed with the animals in the grass of the earth. Let his mind and nature be changed from a man's, and let an animal's mind and nature be given to him. And let seven periods of time pass over him, this sentence is by the decree of the angelic watchers, and the decision is a command of the holy ones, so that the living may know, without any doubt, that the Most High God rules over the kingdom of mankind, and he who bestows it on whomever he desires, and sets over it the humblest and lowliest of men. This is the dream which I, King Nebuchadnezzar, have seen. Now you, Balthazar, explain its meaning, since none of the wise men of my kingdom are able to reveal its interpretation to me. But you are able, for a spirit of the holy gods is in you. Then Daniel, whose Babylonian name was Balthazar, was appalled and speechless for a while, because he was deeply concerned about the destiny of the king and his thoughts alarmed him. The king said, Balthazar, do not let the dream or its interpretation frighten you. 
Balthazar answered, My lord, may the dream be meant for those who hate you and its message for your enemies. The tree that you saw, which became great and grew strong, whose height reached to heaven and which was visible to all the earth, whose foliage was beautiful and its fruit abundant, and on which was food for all under which the beasts of the field lived, and in whose branches the birds of the sky nested. It is you, O king, who have become great and grown strong. Your greatness has increased, and it reaches to heaven, and your dominion reaches to the ends of the earth. In that the king saw an angelic watcher, a holy one, descending from heaven, and saying, Cut the tree down and destroy it, but leave the stump with its roots in the earth, but with a band of iron and bronze around it in the new grass of the field, and let him be wet with the dew of heaven, and let him feed with the beasts of the field, until seven periods of time pass over him. This is the interpretation, O king. It is the decree of the Most High God, which has come upon my lord the king, that you shall be driven from mankind, and your dwelling place shall be with the beasts of the field, and that you be given grass to eat like the cattle, and be wet with the dew of heaven. And seven periods of time shall pass over you until you know, without any doubt, that the Most High God rules over the kingdom of mankind, and he bestows it to whomever he desires. And in that it was commanded to leave the stump with the roots of the tree in the earth, your kingdom shall be restored to you after you recognize, understand fully, that heaven rules. Therefore, O king, let my advice to you be considered and found acceptable. Break away now from your sins and exhibit your repentance by doing what is right and from your wickedness by showing mercy to the poor, so that, if you repent, there may possibly be a continuance of your prosperity and tranquility and a healing of your error. All this happened to Nebuchadnezzar the king. Twelve months later, he was walking the upper level of the royal palace of Babylon. The king said thoughtfully, is not this the great Babylon which I myself have built as the royal residence and a seat of government by the might of my power and for the honor and glory of my majesty? This punishment represents a fall in the hierarchy of the created order. From being a universal provider and protector to becoming one that is in need of provision and protection, a lowly beast. Psalm 8 5 to 7 Amplified Bible Yet you have made him a little lower than God, and you have crowned him with glory and honor. You made him to have dominion over the works of your hands, and you have put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, and also the beasts of the field. As the birds and the beasts took shelter and found sustenance under the great tree, Nebuchadnezzar himself became like them. The text swiftly transitions from Nebuchadnezzar's animal sojourn to his restoration. Daniel 4, 31-34 Amplified Bible While the words were still in the king's mouth, a voice came, as if falling from heaven, saying, O King Nebuchadnezzar, to you it is declared. The kingdom has been removed from you, and you will be driven away from mankind, and your dwelling place will be with the animals of the field. You will be given grass to eat like the cattle, and seven periods of time will pass over you, until you know, without any doubt, that the Most High God rules over the kingdom of mankind, and He bestows it on whomever He desires. Immediately the word concerning Nebuchadnezzar was fulfilled. He was driven away from mankind and began eating grass like cattle, and his body was wet with the dew of heaven, until his hair had grown like eagle's feathers, and his nails were like bird's claws. But at the end of days, that is, at the seven periods of time, I, Nebuchadnezzar, raised my eyes toward heaven, 
and my understanding and reason returned to me. And I blessed the Most High God, and I praised and honoured and glorified Him who lives forever. For His dominion is an everlasting dominion, and His kingdom endures from generation to generation. The moment when Nebuchadnezzar lifts his eyes to heaven in the Bible is a moment of great significance. This gesture of raising one's gaze upward is a powerful symbol of the human desire to connect with a higher power. In this particular story, it marks the climax of a dramatic narrative. The act of lifting his eyes to heaven is a symbolic gesture of humility, reverence and surrender to a higher power. This moment of profound revelation is a turning point in his journey. Isaiah 40, 26, Amplified Bible Lift up your eyes on high, and see who has created these heavenly bodies. The one who brings out their host by number, he calls them by name, because of the greatness of his might and the strength of his power, not one is missing. It is a wordless gesture, a form of humility that an animal could accomplish. Although animals rank below humanity in the created order, their instinctual knowledge of God is often described as truer than humanity's sin-darkened thoughts. Imagine living as a wild beast, disconnected from the world around you. That's exactly what happened to Nebuchadnezzar, and it transformed his perspective. No longer could he ignore the power of God or rely solely on his own self-confidence. He was forced to confront his limitations and look up, embracing his newfound sense of dependence. Humbling the King The story of Nebuchadnezzar's transformation into a beast is not a work of fiction, but rather fairy tales are tapping into an aspect of the truth that we find in scripture. In the old story, the arrogant prince is transformed into a beast until he learns to love selflessly. His outward appearance is made to match his character until he changes his ways. Nebuchadnezzar's pride caused him to become subhuman, so God banished him from mankind. He was given the mind of an animal to teach him humility before God. Nebuchadnezzar's transformation into a beast is not a myth, but rather a truth that is explored in fairy tales. This new perspective is forced on Nebuchadnezzar as a punishment, but there is grace here. God gives him an animal mind, which changes his perspective and restores his relationship with God. Daniel 4, 35, Amplified Bible all the inhabitants of the earth are regarded as nothing, but he who does according to his will in the host of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth, and no one can hold back his hand or say to him, What have you done? Nebuchadnezzar's account invites us to repent of pride and ignoring God, but at a more profound level, it reveals the character of our God who humbles us and restores us to our right mind. A king of such stature deserves our utmost admiration and praise. In contrast to Nebuchadnezzar's arrogance, Jesus ascends his throne through humility. He is the great and everlasting king, as Paul tells us, who, although he existed in the form and unchanging essence of God as one with him, Possessing the fullness of all the divine attributes, the entire nature of deity, did not regard equality with God a thing to be grasped or asserted, as if he did not already possess it or was afraid of losing it, but emptied himself without renouncing or diminishing his deity, but only temporarily giving up the outward expression of divine equality and his rightful dignity by assuming the form of a bond servant and being made in the likeness of men, he became completely human but was without sin, being fully God and fully man. Philippians 2, 
6 to 7 Amplified Bible. This move from very God to humble human parallels Nebuchadnezzar's descent from great king to lowly beast. But in contrast to the king of Babylon, King Jesus willingly descends the created order to become like those he cares for. Jesus Christ took on a human mind to redeem man. God does not command what he has not accomplished. The exaltation of Jesus over both heaven and earth was preceded by his display of humility. For this reason also, because he obeyed and so completely humbled himself, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow in submission, of those who are in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and that every tongue will confess and openly acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord, sovereign God, to the glory of God the Father. Philippians 2 9 to 11. Amplified Bible. Nebuchadnezzar's humility is the prelude to praising the King of Heaven. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol and honor the King of Heaven, for all his works are right and his ways are just, and those who walk in pride he is able to humble. Daniel 4 36 to 37. Amplified Bible. Now at the same time, my reason returned to me, and for the glory of my kingdom, my majesty and splendor were returned to me, and my counselors and my nobles began seeking me out. So I was re established in my kingdom, and still more greatness than before was added to me. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and exalt and honor the King of heaven for all his works are true and faithful, and his ways are just. And he is able to humiliate and humble those who walk in self-centered, self-righteous pride. This kind of praise is the proper human response to God's goodness and glory. But pride disorders our minds so that we ignore God and become less than human. Paul urges us to reflect on Christ's humanity so that we can embody his mind. Philippians 2 Amplified Bible Have this same attitude in yourselves which was in Christ Jesus. Look to him as your example in selfless humility. When we see the character of God shining in his humility, it humbles us and leads us to praise. Like Nebuchadnezzar and like Jesus, we must humble ourselves to ascend to our full humanity. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, being right is so much more fun than being humbled. Remaining defensive is so much easier than offering kindness. Getting even is more instinctive than getting low. As the new day dawns upon me, I feel the need for a fresh start and renewed grace. I am grateful that you have helped me. Thank you for being a compassionate presence in my life. I know that you resist the proud, but you give grace to the humble. The last thing in the world I want is to experience your resistance. So today, Father, I humble myself before you. Please bring glory to yourself as you guide me back to the ways of the gospel. Dear loving and compassionate Father, as I begin this new day, I come before you with a heart full of gratitude and a deep sense of humility. I acknowledge that I am nothing without you, and I need your mercy and grace to live this day to the fullest. Please grant me the gift of humility so that I may recognize my limitations and weaknesses and rely on your strength and wisdom to face the challenges that lie ahead. Help me to be kind and compassionate towards others and to extend grace and forgiveness to those 
who may have wronged me. Grant me the courage to face any situation that may come my way, and the wisdom to make the right decisions. May my actions and words bring glory to your name, and may they reflect the love and compassion of your Son, Jesus Christ. Fill my heart with gentleness and compassion, so that I may be a source of encouragement and comfort to those who are hurting or struggling. And may the outcome of any situation be in accordance with your good and perfect will, and may it bring glory to your name. I pray all of these things in the mighty and powerful name of Jesus Christ, who is my Saviour, Redeemer, and friend. Amen.